What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're actually talking about part two of building my NAS, my storage backup solution. Last video, I told you that I was gonna actually do a three, two, one backup solution where it went from the studio NAS, backed up to the home NAS, and then the home NAS backed up to Dropbox. Actually, we decided to switch that up a little bit. We're actually gonna go from the studio NAS, do a complete copy to a second NAS that's, built, that's here in the studio, and then that second NAS will actually upload to Dropbox. The main reason we wanted to do that was I wanted to have two forms of redundancy back up here on site. I do have the G shuttle that I told you guys about in the last video, but since that's capped out at 100 terabytes, I needed something that could actually back up everything and have everything a complete copy of it. So the second NAS has 176 terabytes, while the primary editing NAS is 240 terabytes. All right, so real quick, before we hop on the computer, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the setup. So the last video, we already went over the TS-1655, the amount of storage drives that's in it, and the QNAP 10 gigabit switch. The other NAS that I have is an H1288X. Now this is an eight bay NAS with four SSD slots and then two M.2 slots inside. I have this configured with 176 terabytes. The only thing we really needed to do for the setup of this to get this communicating with the network is as I mentioned, plugging in a 10 gig ethernet cable. So we'll be able to plug directly from the back here into an open port and one of my ethernet ports here, which is gonna allow this NAS to communicate with everything on the network at 10 gigabit speeds. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that I'm not gonna link this NAS to any of the systems. So it will not show up as an actual storage drive on any of the computers in the office. It's only gonna be recognized by this NAS once we go into the QNAP software and sync this NAS to the H1288X. So now, now that we know how we're doing this, we're literally just plugging one cable in from the back of this one directly into the switch. And then all the rest of the work is gonna happen at the computer when we tell the, this NAS what to do with what else is on the network. So let's go ahead and get started. You wanna be somebody. So now I wanna show you essentially how to get this set up on your system. I'm gonna assume that you've already gone through just the basic setup process when you've plugged in your QNAP and you found it through the QFinder Pro app. Um, and so let's just assume that you're here now and you're gonna, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is map the network drive. And what I mean by that is you're gonna wanna be able to just go into your file explorer and click on your studio drive or whatever you're gonna name your, your, actual, your actual NAS system. You're gonna wanna be able to click on that just as if it was a physical drive plugged into the computer. The only way to do that is to map the network drive. Now the cool thing, because you're using a network attached storage, is that just like here in the studio, we've got four, sometimes five computers when I bring my laptop in, I can easily go to any one of these computers and pull up any information off the NAS because they're, this drive is mapped to all these systems. So I'm gonna show you how to get started with that process first. So if you're using a PC, in order to map a network drive, you're gonna open up your Windows Explorer, and then you wanna right click on where it says network, and then map network drive. Again, mapping your network drive, this just means you wanna be able to access your NAS as if it was a native drive like plugged into your computer, like plugging in a USB drive. So from here, you can choose any drive letter that you want. I'm just gonna use Z. And then you're gonna click Browse so that you can find the network drive. So we'll click Browse, give it a second, and it'll populate any um, network attached storage devices that are connected to your network. Once it finally populates, you'll see the names of your network drives. Now, if you haven't already renamed your QNAP, I would definitely recommend you do that first, but I have Studio and then Studio 2. Studio 2 is my new studio setup here, and Studio was my original NAS that I brought from my old uh, home studio. So I'm gonna double click on Studio, and it's gonna ask you to sign in. You're gonna sign in using the same login credentials that you set up on your QNAP, or if you set up user preferences, you're gonna use one of those user accounts to sign into your network. And then you wanna click remember my credentials and then click okay. Once you log in, this is the really cool thing about your NAS. You don't have to give access to the entire NAS. You can actually give access to specific folders so that you can limit what users are able to see and what they can't see. So for example, let's say that I have public, studio, web, multimedia, homes, and then home. But all I really want on this system is just the active projects. So that's gonna be under studio. And then I'm gonna click studio here. And I'm just gonna select active projects. What this is doing, this, is, this means this file path is the only location that'll be mapped to this computer. So when I hop in, it's gonna take me directly to this and only this. Anything else that's saved on my NAS won't be able to be accessed directly unless I map that location. 
if you wanted, for example, the entire studio drive, like for me, everything that's studio related gets saved in the studio folder. So I would want the entire studio folder to be mapped to this computer. If I wanted to do that, instead of actually clicking a subfolder, I would just click studio and then click okay. For the sake of this, let's just assume that I only want the active projects mapped and we're gonna click okay. Once you click okay, you basically just assigned this location on your network or your NAS, this drive letter. So this is the same equivalent to taking like a OWC drive, plugging it into your computer and then it pops up and it says like OWC and then it says drive letter I. This is the same thing, but you're just manually mapping it so that every time you cut the computer on, this shows up as if you plugged it in, even though it's only recognizing it because it's connected to your network. Now from there, I'm just gonna click finish and then double check to make sure you click reconnect that sign in. It's very important that you do that. If you don't, then every time you log into the computer, you'll have to repeat these steps and, and actually sign in every time. If you want this to just happen where you cut the computer on, you're ready to roll, make sure you check that box that says reconnect that sign in. Now that we've mapped that network drive, if I was to actually close all of these out and then just open Windows Explorer again, you'll see that active projects shows up under my PC as if it was a plug, a physical drive plugged into the computer. The cool thing about this is that nothing else from that QNAP is actually accessed through this folder, only the active projects. This makes it cool because let's say that you do have 100 terabytes and maybe you've got a small portion that you want to put on your wife's or your spouse's computer that they have access to. You can create a folder that says, you know, whatever family drive and then allocate certain amount of uh, stores to that folder. And then you can actually map just that folder to the family computer. That way you don't have to worry about your files or anything else that's important being saved to this. And again, that's basically how you would map your network drive. Now you would do this for any system that you wanna have access to it. And you can honestly get super creative just depending on how you wanna organize or what limitations you wanna to give to certain people or certain uh, systems on your network. Now in my case, in the studio, I wanna be able to go to any one of my computers here, open it up and just do whatever I need to do. So the entire actual studio folder is mapped to all my systems, just like this one here. So instead of it saying active projects, it actually says studio. And if I click it, I have all the folders that are there, not just the active projects like it shows here. So now that you've mapped your network drive, one of the best things that I think is actually powerful for an, a home network, or even if you have an office space like we do, is the ability to have some of these steps automated for you. Now, the reason we do this is I have one NAS that we edit off of, I have another NAS that we copy all the, all the data to, and I basically wanna have that done automatically for me at the end of every night, so I don't have to think about it. I just wanna know at the end of every day, whatever's in one folder will automatically get copied over to the other folder. To do that, there's a couple steps you gotta do to set this up. The first thing is setting up the RTRR server on the receiving NAS. So what I mean by that is the system that's getting the copies, you wanna go into that and set up the RTRR server. So for me, I'm gonna go into the JPM Studio and we're gonna use the Hybrid Backup 3 software. This is built directly into your QNAPs. You can actually download it from the App Center if it's not already installed. But once you actually download it and install it, we're gonna go over to where it says Services and we're gonna set up the RTRR server. Now the reason you're gonna do this is because you basically wanna use your ethernet cables that you have through your network as almost de just data cables that transmit whatever information is going from one system to the next. Inside of the Hybrid Backup 3 software, you're gonna go to RTRR server under services. And from here, you're gonna wanna enable these services. You're gonna create whatever password you want. Now this is a shared password for the RTRR server. This can be completely different than what you actually use to log into the system. I've already got mine set up. I don't wanna actually alter what I've already got. Um, you're gonna assign it a port number. Again, by default, it's gonna be set to 8899. You can leave it at that or you can change it. If you know what you're doing, you can change it. I didn't go in and mess with any of this. You're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and then you want your rate limit settings to be set to unlimited. And then where it says network access approval, I basically only wanted to give access to this NAS from a specific IP address. Now this gets a little confusing, but this is another reason why you wanna set up a static IP address with your systems. You want something that is permanent, locked in, and always the same no matter how many times you cut it on or off. 
So for me, what I like to do is go to allow approved connections. That means this server, the RTRR server that we're setting up, will only allow connections from a specific IP address. If you don't have a static IP set up from your sending NAS, then this is not gonna work. You have to set that up first. So now that I, since I have mine set up, I'm gonna go ahead and click add. And from add, we're gonna leave it at IPv4. And I'm just simply gonna insert my IP address for the sending NAS. So my other NAS, I'm just gonna go in, find that an easy way to find what that is, is to open up your QFinder software and it'll actually be displayed right here under IP address. So once you do that, you're pretty much done on the receiving end of the setup. Everything else is gonna be done from the sending end of the setup. So keep in mind, I don't wanna get this, I don't want this to be super confusing, but keep in mind, we're going from one NAS or NAS A is copying to NAS B. What we just did was set up NAS B for receiving. So now what we're gonna do is inside of NAS A, the sending NAS, we're gonna go in and open up the hybrid backup three software again. Once that opens, we're gonna go back down to where it says uh, uh, sync, I'm sorry. We're gonna go to where it says sync. Now we're gonna create a sync. We're basically telling, hey, I want you to do this at this time or whenever or all the time. And from inside of that, there's a couple of different options that you want, two-way sync, one-way sync, and active sync. The most common and the ones that I use majority of the time are two-way syncs and one-way syncs. All that means is one-way means I'm gonna sync one direction. So that means this system is gonna go there and that's it. It's not gonna do anything else. It's not gonna receive anything back, nothing like that. Two-way syncs are common if you want to also receive information. For example, let's say if we wanted to send information to Dropbox, but then if I was to add something to that same Dropbox folder from my phone, I want my NAS to see that and download it to my system. That would be a two-way sync. For this though, since we're just copying from A to B, I wanna actually make this a one-way sync. So for here, we're gonna click Create One-Way Sync Job. When this opens, you gotta get a list of options of where you can sync to. I'll show you a Dropbox setup as well. We're gonna go with remote NAS. Now, remote NAS just means a separate NAS attached to this network, this system. Uh, we're gonna click remote NAS, and I've already got my other backup NAS set up, but I'm gonna go through the steps anyway just to show you. Click add account, and then you can name this anything you want. This doesn't have to be the name of your actual NAS system. So I'm gonna use this as test backup system. Um, and then from here, we're gonna do IP address. Now, if you click the little uh, search window, if you know the IP, you can just type it in. I just like to click the search so it pops up. As long as you're connected to the network, it's detecting it, it'll automatically find it, and then you can go ahead and select it. And now where it says RTRR server, all you're gonna do is type in the password that you created when you set up the RTRR account. So again, when we were here in the main NAS and we actually went to RTRR server, whatever password you typed in here is what you're gonna type in here to configure it. This is gonna allow NAS A to communicate with NAS B. And then from there, before you click create, I like to just click speed test. This will actually configure and connect and then you can actually check to make sure that you're fully throttling the connection speeds. So just like that, we're now connected, it's a success, and it's showing that it's connecting at 1.17 gigabytes per second, which means I'm basically getting one gig, uh, one gig of footage per second of transmission speed, which is crazy fast. It's gonna fully saturate that connection because this is a direct connection from one NAS to the other NAS and just bridge with a 10 gigabit switch. So if we click create, it's now gonna set that up automatically as our destination. So we're, we're almost there, we're not fully completed yet. So now we can click select to actually tell it what types of sync or backup or system transfers that I want to actually do. So what we're gonna do now is you see the local NAS is the actual NAS that you're working on or the NAS that you're connected to right now. And then the backup NAS is what shows over here with the little cloud symbol. Even though it's locally connected, it still shows up as a cloud because it's separate from this system here. It's a whole different system. So if you kind of look down this, the first thing you wanna do is name this type of job. What is this that you're doing? So this is just a test. You can add a description here. 
Uh, and this is just so you never forget, or if you got other people on your team that will possibly go in and make changes, they know why you set this up. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add a paired folder. So we click this plus. It, this is the actual folders that are currently available on my sending NAS, NAS A. If you don't see a folder, or let's say you wanna create a new one, which we're gonna do, we're gonna go through the drop down. we're gonna click this plus here, and we're gonna call this um, test, NAS to NAS backup, just like that. So now I created a, just a simple test folder, NAS to NAS backup, we'll click OK. And then the next thing we're gonna do is say, OK, I want you to take all of the stuff from the test NAS to NAS backup, and I want you to send it to this NAS into the location. So now we gotta choose the destination. So for here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do uh, OK for studio. And then I'm gonna click and call this, we'll do studio again. I'm gonna call this test, no, we'll call it backup test um, receive. So backup test receive. This is just so that we know, like, hey, the backup, the test backup is going to the backup test receive. We're gonna create this folder again. So now we're gonna click OK. So now, just at a quick glance, what we just told the system is, hey, look, I want you to take everything that's in this test NAS backup folder and send it to this location, okay? The cool thing is that you can actually do this for multiple folders within the same sync job. So if you know that you want to make copies of everything in the you know, active projects, but you also wanna make copies in your YouTube folder, you can actually do that within the same job and it'll copy over and you can set separate destinations for, which makes it super simple. Instead of having to go in and copy from here and manually drag it, you can actually automate this and let the systems do it automatically. And like I said, the biggest plus is that you get an email at the end saying, hey, we just completed this job. So now we're gonna click next because this is the only thing we wanna do. From here, you're gonna choose the schedule. Now this is how active do you want this to happen? Do you want this to be real time, which means every single time you put something in that folder, it's gonna copy it over? Do you want it to be on a schedule? Or do you want it to run after other jobs on the network have been completed? Now, one of my favorite things to do is actually to set, a, set things up on a schedule. While I'm editing, I don't want it to be copying things over and slowing down my connection speeds. I wanna be able to get full saturation of my network while I'm here editing. So for me, every night at about 11 o'clock is when I actually have my backups take place. Because even if I'm here around 11, I'm usually, that's towards the end of my night, I'm ready to go. I mostly want this to happen overnight for me. So we'll set up schedule. And the cool thing is you can actually set up active schedules. You can actually set this up, uh, or you can set up 30 different types of schedules. Uh, maybe you have it go from one point to one point and then take a break and then another point to another point. You can really get creative with how you want this to back up. But for me, I just want one simple schedule and I want it to start at a certain time and basically transfer over. And so we're gonna click this plus to add a schedule. And then we're gonna select whether we want this to happen once, periodic, daily, weekly, or monthly. Now for me, whenever I get back and I'm working in my active projects, I want it to always copy whatever changes happened into my new my backup NAS automatically. This is not just footage that we offload, but let's say I'm editing and I download music or I download assets. If something happens, I wanna have a copy of the entire project, all the assets for that project copied over. So for me, I like to do a daily backup, but you can choose whichever one makes the most sense. So daily backup, and we're gonna choose the starting time. Now this is also in military time, so anywhere around like 18, 19 hours, whatever you decide you want that start time to be, we'll just do 18 hours. And then you don't wanna set an end date unless you only want this backup to happen for a certain amount of time. Since I'm always editing and all active projects go into the active projects on my NAS, I need this to happen indefinitely. Now we'll click OK. So we just defined the first thing that this is gonna do. Now it's also cool if you wanted to do inactive hours. I play around with this from time to time because depending on the season, if we're super busy, sometimes it's not able to copy all the changes that we've made overnight. Most of the time it does, but let's say you got a lot of things that you're trying to copy over and you just don't want, your, you don't want it to roll over into copying while you're actually 
trying to edit off of it. So you can set up inactive hours. And what that means is like, hey, look, during this time to this time, don't do this job. Just wait. And then it'll resume at the next time that it's supposed to start, which is at 1,800 hours. Um, it'll start there and then continue. And if it didn't finish, it'll just pause during your inactive hours, start back where it left off and, and finish the process. Now you can choose when you want to run this job. Um, and most of the time for me, I just like to click sync now. And so what it's going to do when I click sync now, we actually set this up is anything that's in that folder is going to automatically send over to the other one. So before we do that, just so that I can show you, I want to actually go ahead and put, um, we'll just put this small crime song by Musicbed. So I just copied those two songs into the test NAS to NAS backup. So when we actually go into sync, it should automatically show up when we sign in uh, into the other NAS, it should automatically show those songs. So we'll click next. And then from here, now these are a bunch of different policies and things. I'll kind of speed through this, but usually all the defaults for me have worked really well. Uh, unless you have a reason to change anything, you don't have to go in here and change anything. Notification trigger. This is where it's going to send you an email and you can actually configure whatever email you want to be uh, attached to your NAS. So anytime your NAS has a notification, it basically emails you. And so what I like to do is I like to know if the job didn't complete for whatever reason, and I want to know when the job finishes, just for peace of mind. I just want to know when I go home tonight that at some point I'm going to wake up to an email that said it copied over, you're good. Like we got already got the copy sent over. This is also handy because you never know. Maybe your, your destination NAS has filled up storage. You're not monitoring it. This will let you know if it failed, and it'll tell you because of storage allocation or something of the sort. So you'll actually be notified when it works or when it doesn't. And then network, you're going to leave that set to automatic. And then we'll click next. So the summary is just kind of the last glance. So you see exactly what's happening with the network. So what we just set up was we created a folder on our editing NAS, NAS A, that test NAS to NAS backup is going to automatically copy over in real time starting at 1800 tonight. And it's going to copy over to my backup NAS into the backup test received folder. But we also told it to sync right now. So anything that's in the folder right now, just send that over right now so that we're already caught up. And then we'll click create. Once we click create, it'll take a couple seconds and then you'll actually see it populate here and it'll show syncing. And it'll actually show the progress of what's uh, of every time it's working or, or when it's actually completed. So right now it says syncing 1%. I've already got my notification and success, which means it's already synced everything, which we only had the two songs, and it even told you the two files. It was two files that it had. It copied those over to the backup NAS automatically. We can actually check that by coming back into uh, the original NAS folder here, and we can go into File Station, and then we'll go into the new folder that we created, which was under Studio, and then it was the backup test received. And there's our two songs. So just like that, we created an automatic backup solution that's just going to copy from one drive, from one system to another system. The cool thing, this is what makes using network attached storage a thing, like a peace of mind, is that this happens in the background. So all I got to do once I set this up, like right now in my studio, every time I put something in my active projects, it's going to automatically copy it over to my backup NAS. Yo, so I'm editing this video and I realized that it's actually pretty long. So instead of just grouping everything together, I'm actually going to cut this one short right here. So this is just going to be part two going over how I connected both NAS systems to the same network and doing a simple NAS to NAS backup, a one way sync. In the next video, I'll show you how I do a two way sync where I do a Dropbox backup from one of my NAS systems here in the office. And so if that's what you're looking for, definitely click this link somewhere around this video or one of the cue cards. And until the next video, y'all keep creating and I will see you in the next one. Peace.